every once in a while you just come across a product that's so genius, you go, why hasn't anybody thought of that yet? For example, the microphone that you are listening to right now, it is mounted directly on top of my camera pointing straight at me. Now look what happens when I walk to the back of the camera. Okay, I'm now directly behind the camera as if I'm the operator and you can still hear me from directly behind the camera and now I'm gonna walk back in front of the camera and you can hear me again without touching the microphone at all. How is this working? This mic is the DD D4 Duo. It's an on-camera mic that's actually got two mics on board, one facing the front and one facing the back, which is right back towards the operator. Which makes it great for recording the sound of whatever you're pointing the camera at, even though this little cup of coffee is not exactly making the most interesting sounds or any sound at all for that matter. But point is, you are able to point your camera at something while providing your commentary of it from behind the camera. That's biscuit le mac, that translates directly to fat biscuits. Which actually, when you come to think of it, has been exactly the kind of microphone we've always needed, but probably never knew we needed the microphone because it didn't quite exist until now for like a whole range of different kinds of filming. Travel videos, documentaries, interviews, unboxings, tutorials, any kind of filming that involves pointing a camera at something and talking. You can also point a camera at people and have conversations with them. So this guy yep. says the correct way to make a cafe latte is... <laughs> What was it again? Chew on a few yeah, coffee beans. Yeah, a few bean coffee beans. And, and then, then one sip of your milk. Have a sip of milk. Yep. And they've also completely taken into account how close you are going to be to the microphone when you are talking behind the camera because the rear capsule of the D4 Duo has actually a reduced gain. That way when you're right up against the microphone and talking quite loudly because you're probably quite exciting at the amazing view, you don't completely clip the audio signal because it doesn't have independent volume controls, well, gain controls for either the front or rear capsule. So it makes perfect sense that they have reduced the sensitivity of the rear capsule. It sends the audio from the front capsule to the left channel and the rear capsule to the right channel. As of now, there is no option to mix down the audio from the two capsules into a single mono track, which means you probably won't be able to pull clips out directly from your camera and use them right away without any post-processing. So there is some amount of post-processing required, which is understandable if you want to maintain a degree of control over the audio that you've recorded from both the front and the back, but that's just something to keep in mind. There is a switch on the top of the microphone that allows you to disable the rear capsule. In this mode, it functions more like a conventional front-facing only on-camera microphone. But if you look on the side of the mic, you would find that there is a 3.5mm jack labeled input. Now what that allows you to do is actually replace the signal for the rear mic capsule with an external one instead. And that might be useful for a setup like this. I'm wearing a wireless microphone and it's sending the audio signal into my camera while being passed through the D4 Duo, while at the same time, it's still receiving signal from the D4 Duo as an on-camera microphone. Which begs the question, passing an audio signal through the D4 Duo, does that degrade the audio signal? Because I don't imagine a lot of us using it very often if it actually does. So does it? To test that, I'm now plugging the Rode Wireless Go directly into my camera and this is what it sounds like. And now, this is the Wireless Go plugged into the D4 which is going into my camera and so far I haven't been able to hear any audible degradation in sound quality which I suppose is great news for the D4. But do note that the switch has to be set to the front and back address mode for this feature to work because the external input replaces the rear capsule signal. If it is set to front address only mode, then the front capsule signal will occupy both the left and right channels and you will not get your external signal. By the way, this mic doesn't even need batteries. It runs on plug-in power so you never have to worry about charging it or even having to turn it on. But it's not to say that there's nothing on the D4 Duo that hasn't really annoyed me yet. Particularly the windshield has been a little frustrating for me because this furry windshield is the default windshield that comes with the D4 Duo. It doesn't come with any alternative windshield like a foam windshield or something like that. It works great at blocking wind noise but it also blocks a bunch of other things on the D4 Duo. For example, the very important selector switch on the top of the microphone and also your I.O. ports. So it does make it quite difficult to work on the mic when the windshields are 
on. So if you say you want it to plug in anything to the two 3.5mm jacks on the microphone or change the position of the selector switch, you would probably have to do it with the windshield off and then put it back on again. And when you put it back on again, you have to make sure that this rear windshield doesn't push your selector switch out of your desired position. To give you a relative idea of the D4 Duo's sound quality, I'm going to be comparing it against two microphones. The Rode Video Micro, which costs $30 less than the D4 Duo and also shares a rather similar form factor to the D4 Duo, but this is only able to pick up from the front. And also Didi's D3 Pro, which is quite a bit more expensive, but is the best on-camera shotgun microphone that Didi Microphones has to offer in their lineup right now. That was a mouthful. So now you're listening to the D4 Duo and I'm just gonna switch over to the Rode Video Micro. This is the Rode Video Micro. It's also like the D4 in the sense that it does not need batteries, but it is also outputting a fair softer signal compared to the D4. So if I bump up the gain to make up for that lost volume, then it's also going to bring the noise floor up with it, which results in a much more noticeable noise floor. And with the D3 Pro, I actually had to turn the gain down quite a lot because this mic is outputting a way hotter signal compared to the other two mics. It sounds very much cleaner as well, but bear in mind that this mic is more expensive for one, but it's also powered by its very own built-in battery. And one of the final surprises about the D4 is actually its price. And I meant surprise in a good way because this costs only $89. For scale, DD's very own D3 costs $99, which is $10 more than this, and their D3 Pro costs $199, which means this costs less than half their D3 Pro. So I think DD is really onto something here. It's not every day you get impressed by a product's features and design, but at the same time, you're relieved to find out that the price point is actually quite affordable. So DD's D4 Duo is a microphone that I would easily definitely recommend, and that's pretty much all I have to share about this new amazing microphone. And while I still have your attention span, you should most definitely check out some of my other reviews over here. Shameless plug. Okay, three coffee beans. I'm gonna chew. Yeah. Um, um, and magic. <laughs>